you can go from printing like this to upgraded fonts like this by hacking the label maker and creating your own. While the original font looks cool out of the box, it's fun to explore the possibilities of upgrading them to your own style. Whether that is simply modifying the existing code or going all out in creating your own advanced algorithm in another coding language that takes a regular font and recreates it for the label maker printing, like Wakoa did with this fantastic hack. Or Little Charva, who created a website that allows you to draw out any letter or even design with the cool ability to print curves. There are plenty more hacks like this on the Hack Pack Discord. Use the link in the description to join the community, enjoy these hacks, and share your own. For this video, we will stick with just the font upgrades. Leave a comment if you would like another video showing off some of the drawing capabilities of the label maker, like the Mark Rober logo stock code and several other hacks on Discord. So let's jump into the code and see how all of this works. There are three things that have to be in alignment for the stock code to work. First of all, you have to have it listed for your LCD screen to be able to recognize it and print it out as an option. If it's not in this section, your LCD won't give you that option to be able to print it in the first place. Now there are a few extra little hidden things such as down below, we will notice that there are definitions to print a specific type of label or maybe even an image, but it's not set up here you won't be able to see it and therefore it won't be able to print. So you can add those to this list to be able to get it printed. For example, there's the curly bracket for the smiley face and some other options that you can already use that are available but aren't in this list right now. The second thing is having this list of numbers to give the points to draw out the symbol or the letter or whatever you're trying to do. Currently, all of the letters are set up for the capital version. There is no lowercase version, which you could add if you want. There's actually a hack that has done that if you want to check that out. The third piece is in the plot characters function. What ends up happening is when the LCD selects the letter or the number, it converts it to a character variable type. That's this char. The vector up top that has all of the points for the letters uses an index to figure out what letter you need to be printing out. This converts the character number to the index number to reference the right one. So a capital A through Z, it converts it by subtracting 65 because the ASCII number starts at 65 equals A, but we need this A to go down to zero for the index up top. So this is just a conversion table to be able to take the character from the ASCII and point it to the vector index up top to be able to print out the right one. The key note here is if you add anything to this, like a new symbol or a new design, a new letter, you have to update the vector to hold that many. Currently there are 63 rows, easiest way to think of this, 63 rows of data containing 14 wide. And that's why you see the 14, there are 14 number sequences in that one for each one of these. There are other setups, other hacks that simplify this a little bit more. You can check those out. The edit friendly version by Waco is a prime example. If you add something more to it, you need to update this as a reference. The key thing is you don't want to add anything in between here. This is index zero, index one, all of the code down below knows this sequence as it is. If you interject something in between this, all of those numbers, the calculations are not off and they're going to be pointing to the wrong one. So you don't want to do that. Adding it to the bottom, adding, updating this vector, and then at the bottom section of code, you will want to link that to it. This grid is a five by five grid but each point starts at the zero, so you only go up to four. So when you look at all of the numbers, you will notice that the four is the highest number that you see. The first point that we are putting in is technically a zero, 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 but the way it looks at it, it can't understand the multiple zeros, so it just goes back to zero. 
Since it's not writing, the first one is not a one, it's just starting here. So it's going to move the pen to this position and then it waits for the next information. In this case, you have one, two, and four. So the pen is going to be going down and then it'll be moving X coordinate to the two and then to the Y at number four. So it will be coming up here. For the 140, again, the pen stays down. We move to the X coordinate of four and the Y coordinate of zero all the way back down. So you're coming back down here. So from that point all the way down. 0, 3, 2, remember that first one is missing. So we are just moving the pen to the next spot, hovering at 3, 2. And then from there, we go from 3, 2, putting the pen down to 112. So in this case, you have 3, 2, putting the pen down over to 112. And now we have completed the entirety of this code. 200 is where it says stop. We've done the entire letter that we are drawing and you can move on to the next one. In the original code, the letter I just starts at zero and then moves up to four. And that's a one simple straight line. For my secret cipher code, I couldn't lose all the space that you lose in this section. They actually shift the I, the spacing for the I down and that created a problem with the secret cipher code because if I had I in the code, it would take the space, but then write a different letter and it would overwrite in the spot. It created a bit of a problem. So I updated the letter I to look differently than what it does in the original code. So the I that I created, I started at, at one, zero, and then moved it to three, zero. And of course I drew the line between it, so I have to put the one there, three X zero. Then I moved it back here, so I need the zero. Then it's a two for the X and then zero for the placement. Then I drew all the way up to the top, straight up the center line. So that puts the pen down, you keep it on two X, then you go up to the four Y. I moved over to the one at four, and then put the pen down, and then draw the top one, and that stayed at, from the X point, I went from one to three, staying at the top of four. So this is how you would draw the I by having the caps at the bottom of the top. This is the code, should work out, if I did all the math right, to be able to create this type of I for the design.